Good day, everybody. This is Michael Winnegar, CEO of Asante Organics. Guess what day it is? Time to learn. Toxic Free Friday, right? And um, <clears throat> today, we're going to talk about jumpers. We call them kangaroos or, or bunnies, right? Or rabbits and, uh, and uh, people that jump from company to company to company. And why do they do these things, right? And, uh, <clears throat> you know, is the grass always greener on the other side of the fence? And the answer to that is most likely always no. Um, and as we know that I ask for suggestions and you guys uh, always send me some suggestions so we can talk about either the industry or we can talk about um, the, uh, you know, some products or ingredients, anything like that. And uh, I always welcome every suggestion so I can do these videos and do as much educating as I possibly can. So, jumpers. Why do people jump when you see these people? They jump from one company to the next company to the next company to the next company. And there's a lot of different reasons, but when you see leaders do it, <clears throat> or people that are leaders and they're all swarming over to uh, another company, and it's a very quick movement, uh, a lot of times, remember, those guys, they're all getting paid. And I think that, one, it's, it's extremely unethical. It's extremely un, uh, not fair at all to anybody because they've already got their guarantee and they got to, you know, whatever their contract is for their, um, <clears throat> for their performance, whether it's six months or nine months or a year. I've never seen, there's not one guy ever in the history of network marketing history of this industry where a guy actually got paid to go to another company and he's still with that particular company so you know what basically happens is once their uh, their time starts running out and they got you know maybe four months left they start asking the company okay now let's renew this because they don't want to fall into the regular compensation plan it's not going to be like what they were getting guaranteed and then what basically happens is the company looks at this situation, they go, well, there's 20,000 people these guys brought in, so forget about that. If we lose half of them, we still get 10,000, right? And then what happens is they start negotiating to start going to other companies, right? And uh, and I think, you know, if a company's going to pay somebody, let's go make some announcements out there, and let's go out there and say we're paying these people for their leadership skills and, and disclose what they've actually gotten paid. So you know, and then you, you, you're you probably not a good, solid leader in this industry. Just like, uh, you know, Tim Tebow. He got the uh, uh, contract this year to be a quarterback for a team, and they disclosed. I mean, they always disclose all these um, athletes' incomes. And I think in this industry, if we did that, and it's funny that I had spoken to a guy who's a leader from another company, and... Uh, all of a sudden, he said that one of his people got this to this position very, very quickly. And it's like, how can that even happen? And I actually uh, private messaged him and I said, <clears throat> yeah, thank God for those non-disclosure agreements. All right. You know, those, those, those performance agreements or the PDAs or whatever. And, and he's like, yeah, yeah, really good, huh? And I'm like, how is that fair? Right? And um, you got to know that's happening out there. So. Do your homework and find out. Ask questions. Find out if these guys are getting paid, right? And uh, and he said to me, well, if, if we told people we've gotten paid and, and we uh, disclose how much and for how long, you think anybody's going to sign up into the company? Bingo. If a company has to pay a bunch of people to be there, to go out there and, and, and move their products, that basically means that the company has no um, inkling of, of any feelings that they think that those products are going to move in the fair, in, in the marketplace without having to pay people to, to go out there and hustle them. So, you know, if you don't even trust your own ingredient decks and trust the performance of your own products in which your products are made of, but you got to go out there and pay a whole bunch of people to create all this synthetic and false momentum that's that's happening that's that's very very weak 
extremely late. And, um, and that's a lot of reasons why a lot of people jump. And then what happens is <clears throat> as this, you know, their groups are jumping and things like that, some people make a little bit of money and everybody thinks, whoa, you know, it, it's, it's happening over there. We got to get over there. But then that's very, very, um, that doesn't last long at all. And then what are you? Then you're, you're back in the same place you were before wondering, how come I'm not making any money and what's happening? You've got to be able to pick a company, see what, they, make sure you know what they stand for. Make sure they're, they're really expanding their catalog. I think I have one here because it's all about what's in the catalog. That's where your money is in this industry. It's not about the, the magic pill or the shake or the juice or the patch or the skincare product that does these tricks, those are novelties. Those are specialty items on the front end. You get everybody to go, ooh, and then they run over there. But if you really research the ingredients in those products, you wouldn't even, you'd never use them based on what those ingredients are. You wouldn't touch those when you find out what some of those ingredients are linked to. So the money that's going to last you for a lifetime and forever is going to be in the catalog, whatever they're building, in the commodities, commodities that are necessities. That makes more money in the world than anything else. So when you see all these people jumping and hopping and hopping and hopping and going from company really quick like that, a lot of times they're getting paid. A lot of times. That's the highest percentage. They're all These leaders are jumping all over the place. They're not going in there and starting fresh and just like you and I or anybody else would, let's go out there and build a business. Their deal is the deal that they're getting. And when that deal runs out, then they're going to go to the next program. That's why there's some of these guys out there that, you know, have been around for two years and they're in their sixth program already. And then where does that leave you when you really wanted to believe into a company? then that in turn sometimes more than more times than anything else gives the industry a bad name. <clears throat> then you have these people that think that, wow, you know, I, I just got involved in this company. I've been in three, four, five months and I'm not making what I think I should be making. Well, what do you think you should be making? Because this is a business. This is a business you need to treat like a job. Now, the industry has changed a little bit and they, they move things around, but it's still the same. So the, what people say is that, well, you got to give your business 10,000 hours in order for you to succeed. You know what 10,000 hours is? If you're working eight hours a day, it's five years. And that's what we've been saying for Forever. That's what this whole industry is about. This is a five-year business, whatever you're into, right? So that's if you're working eight hours a day. Now, most people don't do that. So let's cut that in half and you're at 10 years. Cut it in half again, you're at 15 years. So it's not about the company, the business, because people try and find everything in the world to blame. But themselves because at the end of the day or at the end of the week or whenever you get paid so but at the end of the day you got paid for what you did it's an equal equivalence of what time you put into your business if you didn't put any time into your business today don't expect to get paid how much time do you put into your business if you treat it like a job I guarantee you're going to be successful. If you work that hard, if you treat it like you spent, you know, a half a million dollars on that business, you would work so hard to try and get your return back. And before you got your return back, you would be rich, wealthy, or retired in this industry. But again, if the company has a good, aggressive back end of commodities, because at the end of the day, it's not about what you're seeing on the front. 
all these little tricks and things that people are doing. Your income is going to be based on what people use every single solitary day. And that's why the biggest companies in the history of this industry filled their back end up with, with commodities that are necessities, things that people do every day, because that's the way you live. So, um, and I believe that another reason why people think the grass is greener on the other side of the fence, because they don't really understand compensation plans. <clears throat> then when they go over to that place that they thought was better, more times than, than not, it's worse. You need to really understand the compensation plans and make sure there's no tricks in there where no people are capping your income or, or if, if you're in a company where there's cycling going on, that they don't stop the cycling and all this juggling and things like that. Remember, there's more money created in depth than there ever could be created in width. So that's a very important thing to remember as well. So, um, you know, hopefully that helped you guys out a little bit about understanding about why people jump around and move around so much. And then why people that, you know, all the friends that are very extremely successful that I have um, in this industry. And I've been in, you know, the industry 32 some odd years. You know, uh, I'll give you an example of a gentleman I know that's worth $80 million. He got involved into the business when he was 24 years old. He was broke. He was a waiter, a waiter. And he got involved in his company and he got laser focused. I think that's why they put these blinders on horses when you watch a horse race, right? They aren't looking around the track and who's following me and this and that and what's over there. And they lose the they lose the race. So they put these blinders on. So all they do is see straight ahead. They don't see a horse race where the horses are looking all over the place. They're just going like crazy to get to that finish line. And this particular gentleman got into his company back. 30 some years ago and you know like I said he, he saw that is the opportunity and he was jarred by a lot of different companies come here come here come here but he's still with that same company and if you saw the way this person lived better than a celebrity because he picked and he parked and the company did the right thing on the back end so he could have beach money and retire the numbers are very, very low on the people that are actually in this industry can become wealthy, rich, or retired. It can happen, but the numbers are, are low on a global scale. Now when you take databases and you look and you divide that amongst the companies, it goes down even more. So we'll talk about that someday as well, and, and, and perfect positioning, timing and positioning and things like that. But that's extremely important as well. There's so many pieces to this puzzle for the guys that really make it. They all need to fit together. It's like a 100-piece puzzle. And if that one little piece is missing, you don't see the picture. But in the industry, it's like, you know, for um, a beginner, it's almost like a five-piece puzzle. And it's just this one whole section. But it, it really doesn't work like that. There's a lot of things that you need to analyze and sit down and think about and not get excited about all the the things on the front end or you know all the distractions and maybe hanging out at the events and doing the YMCA and hugging and squeezing and you know everything else that goes on over there and and really looking at this from a business perspective and saying I'm gonna every network marketing company or, or relationship marketing company is a big huge organization of happy wholesale customers and if that's the case, you got to be able to answer the question, is what they have on the back end in their catalog that they're aggressively, hopefully aggressively, aggressively building, do they have things that people use every single solitary day without thinking about it? Because if you have to convince people to get in because of a certain, you know, product that they are going to use every single day, it's going to be extremely, if it's hard to, you know, sell the product, it's hard to make money. But if it's extremely easy to sell the product, it's easy to make money. And and um, it's simple. It's simple to sell. It's simple to make money. We won't say easy, right? We use the word simple. But 
you know, you can't base your whole entire business because somebody's got some trickery going on with some type of a product on the front end. You have to really look deep into those ingredients because we're in a consumer awareness world right now. And the awareness is just going every place but off. And so if you want to start in a good place when looking at companies, all the <clears throat> honesty, the integrity, the sustainability, the longevity, the viability, the trust, everything, everything that company stands for is going to be found in one place on the back of the label, on the back of that label. What is that company allowing you and your family and your loved ones and other families are going to tell about that company or those products? What are they allowing you to put into your body? And what are they allowing you to put onto your body? And don't think that these company owners don't know what's in their products. Because if you find something in that ingredient deck and you bring it up to them, say, hey, did you know that was in there? And that's in there, and this is in there, and all these different types of ingredients that are linked to some real terrible issues. And they say, well, I don't know that. You gotta check with the formula. They shouldn't own that company. And if they do know that's in there, they shouldn't own that company. This is 2015 now, not 1985. And in the retail world, when you're looking at all these companies rapidly changing their ingredients in things because they're consumer and customer based so are you so you want to find out what what every company stands for on how long it's going to last look at that ingredient deck and hopefully you're using ingredients that are 100 percent chemical free toxic free and certified organic wild crafted ingredients everything like I say one drop one drop of a toxic chemical will ruin the entire formulation so hopefully we learned a little bit today we'll see you again next time God bless you God bless your families your businesses and keep the suggestions coming in and I'll keep doing the videos all right have a good day